You're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. We take a content-based approach to helping intermediate English learners reach higher levels of proficiency. This is segment two of episode 57. We're exploring animals from Africa. In this episode, we've looked at elands and zebras and discovered some of the things they eat and how they get their food. Let's look first at what they eat. Here are facts from the wildlife cards on both animals. You would find similar information in an encyclopedia. You could go to the Wikipedia or a book about the animal. Now here are some sentences we could write using these facts. Now pay attention to the words in all capital letters. These are connecting words that you might use in describing the diet of an animal that you choose to research. Now let's do the same for zebras. Again, notice the word consumes is in all caps. It can keep, your, keep you, that is, from overusing the word eats. Zebras consume grass and leaves with poor nutrition value. Logic follows that they are forced to eat a great amount of food. And using the words a great amount keeps you from overusing the words a lot of. In your report, you would want sentences like these in a paragraph that also tells you how they get their food. Now, in the last episode, we saw a video about lions. Let's look at what lions eat. Since lions are predators, we can write that lions prey on hooved animals, such as gazelles, impalas, and zebras. The words such as tells the reader that you're giving examples to follow a general description. In the second sentence, we use the word scavenge, uh, scavenge, excuse me, as a verb. Scavenge means to eat something that's already dead. Now, we use the word such as, again, to show that we're giving examples. Now, let's have you practice with some other animals we featured in our last episode. I'll supply the facts and see if you can come up with the connecting words. Use the examples we just gave if they fit. Otherwise, dig into your knowledge of English and see if you can come up with more connecting words that make sense. And we started the last episode with some awesome video of elephants in Africa. Here are some items in their diet. Fresh grass in the wet season, leaves in woody parts of trees and shrubs in the dry season. And when you look at a giraffe's long neck, you can probably guess what it eats. Giraffes eat leaves from the branches high up in trees. At night, giraffes ruminate. That is, they regurgitate what they ate during the day, chew it, and then swallow it again. Now, here are some connecting words we've used, plus a few more. Consumes, a great amount of, preys on, such as scavengers, lives on, the diet of a blank is blank, subsists on, grazes on, feeds on. All these facts and the connecting words will be available to you to see on my website. Just go to letscreate.org and navigate to the episode 57 page under the animals unit. So far, we've mostly featured animals of the plains, but Africa is a diverse place in terms of biomes and habitats. Let's learn about an animal that lives in a different region of Africa. These primates are found in dry country on the Horn of Africa and across the Red Sea in Saudi Arabia. They spend most of their days in small bands, but over a hundred join together to sleep at night. They eat fruits and seeds when those are available. Other times of the year, they eat grass, roots, and insects, and even small animals, and they sometimes hunt as teams. They collect food by putting it into their cheeks, which expand to the size of their stomachs. When they return to safety from predators, they then chew that food and swallow it. Females give birth to one baby after six months of pregnancy. Hamadreus baboons have a lifespan of 35 years in the wild. Now, having heard a little about these remarkable animals, let's see how much of the next video you understand. This ends segment two of episode 57, 
We'll be back with segment three after the video. Meet an animal sacred to the ancient Egyptians, the Hamadryas baboon. Native to the Horn of Africa and part of the Arabian Peninsula, the Hamadryas baboon is the northernmost of all baboon species. This highest ranking male steps aside while a female in his harem gives a ride to her baby. With a gentle shove, he follows the baby's mother. The baby just takes it in stride. Males and females both protect and nurture the young baboons. Male baboons are twice as large as females. This male appears to be the lead male, the alpha of this family. He's joined by the female, and she's followed by the baby. The parental cuddle is fleeting. Soon the baby gets restless. The alpha male watches passively from behind the pair. Meanwhile, the baby gets downright rumbunctious. The mom seems focused on her hand, like there's a thorn in it, but the baby seems determined to hold her attention. Mom's attempt to tend her hand is thwarted again. The baby wants something from her, and we soon see that the baby wants to nurse. It looks like the baby gets her way. Mom looks back at the silverback, who appears totally uninterested in the baby's behavior. Interested or not, he's soon engaged by the baby, showing patience and tolerance. Actually, it looks like they both enjoy the playful interaction. Very briefly, the silverback changes locations. Amadryas baboon society is strictly patriarchal. The lead male controls the movements of the females, but also engages in grooming, as seen here. Females who spend most of their time with the dominant male are called central females by researchers. Now those who spend most of their time apart from the males, mostly with other females, they're called peripheral females. As the dominant male ages, younger males start taking over their harem. It doesn't mean the dominant male dies, but his body will change. The silver coat will turn brown. Like all baboons, Hamadryas baboons mate seasonally. The dominant male does all the mating. The females do most of the parenting. The dominant male also protects the offspring. Watching these Hamadryas baboons at the Oakland Zoo in California, I'm not surprised that the ancient Egyptians considered them sacred. 